Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Marilyn Maya and I've wanted to do this video for a while and its title of it is classics I've never that I never read in high school. Actually these are classics that I never heard of before. Um, maybe one I've heard of but um, there's a reason. I went to school in the 60s and when I went to school, our literature classes were very, were very boring actually. But I got to read Oliver Twist, which I liked, it was a little scary. I got to read um, Julius Caesar by Shakespeare. And I got to read Jane Eyre. But basically, um, these are books that are, uh, those books are mainly by European white people and there's so much more that has come since, since the 60s and uh, it's, it was very unfortunate that we had no black history uh, classes and we had no uh, black literature in the 60s. And there were books that we could have read. But anyway, these are the four books, there's many more, but four books that are on my shelf that I want to read maybe this year. So let's start with the first one. And the first one is quite important to me. I never heard of it. It's The Things They Carried by Tim O'Brien. So why is this important to me and what is it about? Um, I was a teenager during the Vietnam War and unlike um, the news that we get now that's like 24 hour cycle, uh, we didn't have internet and we were kept away from the, the news that, was, that they didn't want us, you know, powers that be didn't want us to know. So uh, we found out things much later. And I knew nothing about the Vietnam War. I was, at that time, I was uh, married. Uh, I wasn't uh, political because I was too busy uh, trying to uh, raise children and being sort of in that housewife, um, 60s kind of thing. And uh, I was shocked after the Vietnam War when we found out a, a lot of things and why people were protesting, et cetera, et cetera. So what is this about, the things they carry? Um, now, this is a collection of stories that are uh, not so loosely connected. Um, it's a collection of 22 stories chronicling the author Tim O'Brien's recollections of his time as a soldier in the Vietnam War. Um, he says it's not a memoir but um, he admits in the book to often blurring the lines between fact and fiction and the names of the people aren't real people but um, so it doesn't have a traditional arc beginning middle and end end but um, this book is important because it remains true to the theme of what he's trying to um, say uh, I haven't read it I'm looking forward to reading it. Um, they, you know, they call it a New York Times book of the century. So I should read it. And uh, I think I told the story of when I was a housewife and had my own apartment. Next door to me was a man, a young guy, maybe 19 or 20. And uh, he was missing an arm and he would stay in his house a lot. And whenever he would see people, he would just like run in and in his house. And that was the first experience that I had. What is happening? What, what is war really? That hit me personally. So I want, I want to find out about more of Tim O'Brien's um, experiences. And what it says is it's a marvel of storytelling 
a vital, important book, a book that matters not only to the reader interested in Vietnam, but to anyone interesting in the craft of writing as well. And I'm interested in both those things. So that's the first book I never read in high school. And uh, good reason I never read it in high school, because it, it, the war wasn't, it, it, it might have been starting around that time, but basically, you know, he wrote this book in, uh, let's see when he wrote this book. I think it was 20 years later in the, in the 90s. And it has so many uh, wonderful reviews, like pages and pages of reviews um, on this book. And as somebody who was brought up in that era, I know that the soldiers of that war were really treated terribly when they came home. You know, uh, which, and that was because of the protests of the war and other things. And this was written in 1990. So basically, he was stewing over all of this, his experiences for like 20 years uh, about. So I'm very, ex I, I really, this is a book that I definitely want to read sooner than later. So the second book, we're going to uh, uh, from almost the opposite. Uh, end of the spectrum when it comes to dark and light. Now, I didn't even know this book existed until BookTube. And I have to thank a couple of uh, BookTube friends. Uh, one is uh, Mark from uh, Reading with Elvis. <laughs> and um, Books with Elvis. <laughs> and he uh, t loved this book so much. And also Jim of books, reading, and stuff, uh, talked about this book. And this is Three Men in a Boat by Jerome K. Jerome. And I found my latest uh, foray in uh, a book sale, a library book sale. They had about five copies of this book. And I took the nicest one. And this one says, to say nothing of the dog. Now, what I read about it is that this uh, author was attempting to write a serious travel book, but uh, what happened was that it turned into something really funny. And I know, I thought maybe this was more of a boy's kind of book, but um, I like humor. And what it says is it was published in 1889, so definitely it qualifies to be a classic. And like, like I said, it's a humorous account of English writer Jerome K. Jerome of a two-week boating holiday on the Thames from Kingston upon Thames to Oxford and back to Kingston. Kingston. And uh, it says it has, a, it, he wanted to make a serious travel guide, and, uh, but the humorous elements took over to the point where the serious and somewhat sentimental passages seem a distraction. Um, one of the most praised things it says about the novel is how timely uh, and updated it feels like today. So I am looking forward. It's not a long read and uh, even the cover looks so funny <laughs> and not to mention the dog and that's also something that makes me want to read it because anything with dogs Okay, so what is the third book? The third book um, that I never read in high school, and it's one that I have heard of, but it was not taught in high school, and that is the Fahrenheit 451 by Ray, Ray Bradbury, a dystopian, and I'm pretty sure it's dystopian, um, novel. Um, yeah, Bleak Dystopian Future. Today, its message has grown more relevant than ever before. So the, the premise is that Guy Montag is a fireman and his job is to destroy the most illegal um, of commodities, the printed book, along with the houses in which they were hidden. And he never questions the destruction and ruin his actions uh, produce, returning each day to his bland life and wife Mildred, who spends all her day with her television family. Now, um, this sounds, I wanted to read this for quite a while and I never seemed to be able to pick it up. 
and I was very, uh, this was 1951. Uh, I was born around there. So uh, yeah, how timely is this book? Um, let me see, what else did I write about it? Um, yeah, it, it presents a future American society where books have been outlawed. And you know, isn't that happening now that in school libraries and even in regular libraries, there's a lot of books that are being banned. So um, not to mention, I think he got this idea when, you know, when they used to burn books during um, when the Nazis came to power. I think I read this somewhere and I think he got this idea about this dystopian future. And I don't read much dystopian novels, I'll be honest, but I think I'm really going, and I've wanted to read this, and this is the year that I'm going to read it. Okay, so the last book that I never read in high school is a book that I never heard of. And it's Things Fall Apart by Chinua Achebe. And I practiced how to say that. And um, yeah, so this is, uh, an African novel. It was written in the 50s, I know that. And it has to do with um, colonialism, but it also has to do with the African culture um, of a part of uh, Nigeria. So this, he, ha he depicts the premises, he depicts, it was, it was written in 58. To, and you know this would would never have been a book that was uh, that I could read in high school. It would never have been allowed. Let's put it that way. It's I heard that it's quite violent, and it depicts pre-colonial life in Igbo land, modern-day southwestern Nigeria. This interested me for a lot of reasons. Uh, I have my I have my genetics go back to Nigeria on my Puerto Rican side more than it did to uh, Spain. So um, I was quite interested in exploring that part of my, uh, you know, the, the Africans that came, that went to Puerto Rico, uh, that uh, is, are part of my, my um, genetic makeup. So um, it is seen as a typical modern African novel in English, and one of the first to receive global critical acclaim. A staple book in schools throughout Africa is widely read and studied in English-speaking countries, but not when I went to high school. And it was first published in the United Kingdom in 58. It follows the life of Okonkwo, an influential leader in the fictional Igbo, Igbo in the novel and a clan of Emofia, who was among other things, a feared warrior. And I think I read that he was also a, um, a wrestler and a wrestling champion. And so the work is split into three parts. And the first describing his family, his history, uh, his violent exterior and tortured soul, and the, the customs and society of the Igbu. The second and third sections introduced, introduced the influence of European colonialism and Christian missionaries in Okonkwo, his family and the wider Igbo communities. And, you know, when I read this, it reminds me a little bit of Hawaii when the Christian missionaries also went everywhere. And uh, I haven't read the Poisonwood Bible because um, I was told that it, it was a little bit too violent for my uh, sensibilities. But no matter what, we have to know that colonialism and missionaries have done more harm than good <laughs> uh, when they try to change other people's culture to the point where they are meant to feel that their culture is not important and the colonizing culture is. Okay, so this made me think of when did I read books? I could have uh, read, I could have talked to you about um, 
African-American writers. But I went to college in, when I was 38, when I took a, um, an African-American literature class. And today when I went on Google, I found out that, you know, the little doodle that they always have on Google is of James Baldwin. And James Baldwin is a writer that I read in college, not in high school, but in college. But now he's taught in, in high school, which I'm very glad about. Other writers during the Harlem Renaissance, like James, uh, like Langston Hughes, uh, who had the best poem of the year, Weary Blues, and Zora Neale Hurston, and I have one of her books. So uh, I think that, that I talked about Things Fall Apart uh, is also connected to uh, next month's, or this month's, this is the first of the month, a reading challenges. So I have a lot of things to talk about uh, regarding that later in another video. But I wanted to say, have you read any of these books? And um, would you suggest that one is bet not better because they're so different, but um, I think that I want to read Things Fall Apart. I mean, not Things Fall Apart, The Things They Carried First, because I have, uh, it brings back so many memories of my teenage years, uh, growing up in New York and uh, not knowing everything that happened. But every one of these books uh, is definitely on my to be read list. So let me know in the comments, what books did you read in high school? Or what books did you not read in high school that you want to read now? And um, I'm going to keep this short. I've been reading a lot of books lately, almost not quite as many as Lindy uh, from Lindy Magpie's Read, my friend Lindy's Magpie Reads, who reads a book a day. Uh, but I've been reading I've been on a reading uh, really spree where I'm, I'm reading like maybe a half a book a day <laughs> and that's a lot for me. So uh, I think I'm going to get to these books sooner than later. Uh, thank you so much for watching if you've got to this point and please like, comment and if you enjoyed this please subscribe to my channel <laughs> and I will see you in the next video. Aloha.